Hello, it's Philip Taylor from Richmond Green Chambers speaking. I'm talking about a book which is a, a standard, definitive work from Sweet and Maxwell, all about insurance law. I've done a review, which is actually on Flickr, and there's the, the review. And this is the book itself. It's a heavy one. It's called McGillivray on Insurance Law. And it's in the 11th edition. So I said, it's a heavy book. It's part of the Sweet and Maxwell Insurance Practitioners Library, which you can see there. It's about 1,200 pages long. It's very much the standard work for Sweet and Maxwell. Very useful sets of cases there. Then we go into paragraphs on the side so you can find out exactly where you're at with the chapter number and then the paragraph number. It's very helpful. Then towards the back, we then got a very good index in, in the 1200 pages, which is there. And as I say, it's a heavy book. It's been written by three eminent people, Nicholas Lee Jones, Queen's Counsel, Professor John Birds, and David Owen, Queen's Counsel. Now, I've given this a variety of different titles on the internet in the reviews I've written. But I've said keeping up with insurance law with the McGillivrays, because that's really what this is about. It's the established work, and in my view, the final word on the subject. It's a difficult area, and an important one, as the government comes to the end of its current parliament in 2010, and the Ministry of Justice are reviewing, for instance, the whole issue of insurance when it comes to funding civil legal aid, with the legal aid budget being stagnant and stopped basically at £2.2 billion pounds per annum. It's obviously an area where I think both political parties have made serious attempts to review how we tackle civil legal aid and possibly use insurance law. So that's really a backcloth to what's going to be coming in the future. What's about the book, though? Because the book itself is an important one, as I say. For instance, those of you who are in insurance or practitioners with insurance clients are going to welcome, obviously, the 11th edition. Not for nothing has this classic work, in my view, which is so frequently cited in court, become known as the Insurance Law Bible. Having been around since the turn of the century, that's the 19th century, and shortly coming up to its uh, centenary in the Olympian year of 2012. That apparently is the last edition, therefore, of this mighty and inspiring, worthy work until that momentous date arrives. Meanwhile, we, we obviously have a statement of what the law is. And it'd be an interesting exercise to compare the contents, say, of the 1912 edition with the latest 11th edition, which is naturally um, where the chapters are um, devoted to things such as uh, reinsurance, Lloyds, and, of course, things like aviation insurance. Think about it, of course, just to get a bit of history here. Um, was for instance, the Wright Brothers uh, flight, which was in December 1903 at uh, Kitty Hawk, actually insured. Doubtful, but you see the way that there are changes taking place within the whole area of law at the moment. Certainly, the evolution of McGillivray reflects the progress, or lack of it, of our times. And at the moment, as I say, we are probably looking at some fairly substantial changes in the next decade. Now, since the publication of the last, the 10th edition of this work in 2002, a number of important decisions have emerged in insurance law, which I've obviously uh, seen indicated in the book's uh, subtitle, and it relates to all risks except marine risks in terms of insurance. Obviously, the title itself is just insurance law, but as I've explained, marine insurance is taken out of the equation. And it's stated in the preface that new material in, in this edition here includes the following. Areas of uh, insurable interest, policy terms, good faith, waiver of the assurer's breaches of duty, contribution, liability insurance, reinsurance, and the liability of agents, just, just to cover a few in the 1,200 pages. 
I think it's fair to say, therefore, that every area of insurance is covered from insurance and insurable interest and the formation of uh, the contract to construction of policies, always very important for us as lawyers, of course, conflict of laws on the international scale, illegality, misrepresentation and mistake. As many of us know, very difficult to prove, but areas that are always there as vitiating factors. The different classes of insurance are also dealt with here in some detail, as are the issues and problems which arise when claims are made and policies fail. And there is, of course, much more, including clarification of the legal boundaries insurance practitioners, which um, obviously we, therefore, are going to have to work in to ensure compliance. And Scottish advocates, of course, are going to be very pleased to know that thanks to the labours of Sarah Wolfe of the Scottish Bar, space is given, obviously McGillivray's a Scot would have wanted this, I'm sure, to Scots law, quote, and it's mentioned in here, where it differs from or usefully supplements English law. Because again, we've still got the two different jurisdictions for much of what we do. As the world changes, therefore, insurance and insurance law changes um, are going to go with it. And there are many new developments which are now taking place, um, obviously with the new digital era. Insurance intermediaries, for example, have become subject to detailed regulation and can now be taken to the financial services uh, ombudsman. Now, clearly, a lot of this stuff is going to be under review by the next parliament as a result of the current economic downturn. Another example, of course, is the draft bill, um, probably going to emerge pertaining to the reform of disclosure and misrepresentation law affecting consumer assured. Now we've got no idea about some of the legislative programmes because of the, the fact that we're end, at the end of a parliament and we're looking to see what will be uh, coming ahead. There will be a Queen's speech in October 2009 but it's going to be pretty minimal if, if in fact we haven't had an election before then. But we're right at the end of this parliament so we'll have to look ahead. One of the benefits I think of getting this book is that it contains the supplements. Now, Sweet and Maxwell are very good at providing very up-to-date supplements, which, of course, we all need, especially for our court work. And, obviously, as they're published between editions, it does help, but you've got to have some sort of notar-up procedure to make sure you're, you're up-to-date. And, of course, in my view, as I say, they're imperative, because they'll keep you up-to-date with what is a complex and fast-changing area of law. Hence the fact that you're keeping up with the McGillivrays. So thank you very much indeed. Well worth getting. Bye bye.